his feet. Finding now Mirinchuk, who's going to look for Tierney. Tierney, he's down the left-hand side. There's Lukaku, and there's the start you want to see. Coleman's going to send Mirinchuk in, and we could be in for number two here. Mirinchuk. Oh, that's delightful. That's absolutely delightful. Benfica nil, Everton 2. Two inside five minutes. We're running rampant here in the first stages of this game. Okay, then. Well, Benfica back in the game. Spoke about Luna making a brilliant save before this. He's beaten from distance with a shot. I'm not... I don't even know if he had that actually covered and that's what he meant to do by sending it over the crossbar or if he just got lucky. As they're... God's sake. Benfica 2, Everton 2. We got away with it before. We're not getting away with it now. Kaku, who instead goes for the volley and that's full time. 2-2 two, two here. I don't know how we've thrown that away, but that could be detrimental to securing our Champions League knockout stage future. Hello everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to another Career Mode episode. Today we've got episode 5 of season 5 dropping for you as we play out the whole month of November, as which we've got 5 games coming for you today to enjoy. So do sit back, relax and enjoy. Only one of the 5 is actually going to be live though, that is because it's incredibly warm here in the UK. So I had to be recording with my fan on today because I just, I just could not stand the heat. So as such, I only managed to get one game actually done live because I was just so warm when recording that game live. that I decided that, uh, okay, for once, I'm going to do it post-con basically because, yeah, it's, I don't know what's happened. It's just incredibly warm in the UK all of a sudden. It's meant to be like this actually for quite some time. So uh, make sure you've got some stuff planned at the weekend because who knows how warm it's going to be then. But... The first game of the day, it came against Benfica. You might have seen in that previous section, we were atrocious in the second half against them in the last episode. We ended up going 2 in front after the first 15 minutes, and we threw that away. So right now, our Champions League qualification is not set in stone. And coming here, the board want us to finish at least to get to the final in there. So... Yeah, we've got to make it for our group stages. So this game was vitally important. We took the lead early on, but it was quite a difficult first half where Benfica, you could say, were edging it for parts of the half. So I felt like we had to try and get ourselves back in front. And when Svila pulled off this save here, I was just like head in hands moment. I was like, don't tell me that, uh, that we're going to be throwing this game away too. Lukaku gets in a bit later on. A fantastic save again from the goalkeeper just in the second half. And at this point, I was not necessarily worried because we were still leading, but I just felt like, you know, one goal could change the entire dynamic of the match if it goes Benfica's way. For us, though, it, uh, it did actually work out to be the case that we got the second goal in the game. Lookman getting in, and it was a really good finish from the number uh, 19. But to be fair, um, Adamola Lookman hasn't really had too much of a look into the side, but that's not down to the fact that he isn't good enough. That's just down to the fact that we've got players... In and around us who are, you could argue, better players. But also, we've swapped from playing that wing formation. We no longer play it. We have the two up top, of course. So, he's not an out-and-out striker. He played there in this game. He grabbed a goal, so fair play to him. And he did what was needed. But after the first game coming to a close, a 2-0 win it was really all I could ask for. But it's now time to jump into the live game against Chelsea. And then after that, I'll be back with some more post-com games for later on. Here we go then. The first live game of today then will feature against Chelsea away from home in the Premier League. And as you can see, it is going very well for us at the moment. Three points clear of Manchester City. Chelsea in the top four though, so they are going to be a bit of a challenge here. It's more of a usual top four we're beginning to see a little bit. So yeah, two Manchester clubs keeping up with us currently. Chelsea 10 behind, so they really could use a result here against us. Hopefully well, we will come out on top. In terms of the Champions League, after that result, it does mean that we are now five clear of Benfica with two games to play. So our, our, we've basically secured um, knockout football as long as we beat Dynamo Kiev in the next game. The only worry is I don't think we're going to get top seed because Roma are storming away with things. Four out of four wins here. And uh, if they win their next game, of course, and we win ours, we then can't catch them. They'll still be five ahead. Nevertheless, though, it is extremely warm here in the UK, so I'm not going to waste any time. Let's head into game and see if we can pick up ourselves three points against Chelsea. And the wonder is as well, how much has this Chelsea side changed since we last played against it, of course, in that Europa League game with Villarreal, where we beat them quite convincingly last time at Stamford Bridge, I believe. So yeah, if it's not, uh, if it's not too different, we should be uh, having a good day at the office as Kingsley Coman immediately drives forward, runs straight into Mateus De Ligt and gives the ball away. There's a few familiar faces as well in this Chelsea side. Here is Decore. Now Patrick towards Coleman. Kingsley Coleman, great little touch. 
Gets the shot away, but it's well blocked by Chelsea in the box. Obviously, that front two today, Lukaku and Herrera, are the ones we're looking at to find the chances. But Coleman certainly can get some as well. And he does finish them usually in and around the penalty area. So we're looking at him too. Lukaku as well against his former club. Is he going to come back to haunt Chelsea? Now, I am looking at that near post where Romelu Lukaku currently is. There's delivery. It goes towards Davison Sanchez instead, who somewhat wins it. But it's going to be Chelsea with possession then. And they should be able to play their way out here as Lukaku's trying to stop it. But nevertheless, 15 minutes into the game, I'm not too worried about this Chelsea side all that much until I see something from it. Roman's ball, Herrera on the chase, and he actually gets there. Ivan Herrera too, pulling it back towards Patrick. First time came in with a shot, and Kepa will save it. I mean, it's so far out, though, to really test Kepa that I don't think he would score it. So, we we'll have to get a little bit better in terms of these positions for these chances, but... Nevertheless, Patrick did it. Let's test, at least test the palms of Kepa. As that is headed away straight back towards Kingsley Coleman. Sends another delivery in again. This time it's going to be Decore on the header. And again, it's straight at Kepa, who makes a relatively easy save. First half of football has gone our way here at Stamford Bridge, but nothing to show for it yet. Every chance we've created has been simple for the Chelsea goalkeeper. So, yeah, I don't really know what to say other than that. Patrick again in possession as we look to drive forward yet again. Decore, Patrick. Coleman on the run, and we've given away possession really cheaply there. Chelsea in this first half, they've not created much, but they are actually defending very well, and it's a little bit worrying for us, as this is going to be the last chance of the first half, as the corner is whipped in. Lukaku didn't even challenge for it, so it's going to be the end of the half there. And Chelsea will be pretty happy with the way things have gone here, because they've kept us relatively quiet. It's been so simple for Kepa. He's had not a lot to deal with in this first half, and what he has had, he's dealt with easily. So... Yeah, I'm sure when they come out second half, they'll want to get a bit more creative. But if they keep us this quiet, they're not going to be too worried at all. Nil-nil at the break. We do need a strong start in the second half. As wan again lifts it in. Lukaku attacking it. He's on the floor at the minute, so I can't really put another cross in. wan though, towards Herrera. All of a sudden, the space for Lucas Herrera. Oh, he's got to find even Herrera. Did you see that? Herrera was in acres of space there. He's got to find him. Patrick forced back by Kante. Now Torreira towards Patrick again. Decore making the move. Decore. Oh, and Babu steps in and wins it back. Every time we've had it in these areas today, we've lacked that final ball. You know, that that there just in front of Decore. If he can nick it and just send it through Herrera's in. But with a minute to play in the 90 minutes, I don't see us getting a goal now. And now it's pretty much defending to make sure we don't throw this away. Because I still want the draw at least. We've been good enough here. Chelsea, I don't think, have registered a shot yet. As Holgate steals it back again then. And then we're over the time and the referee won't give us a chance. Full time here. Nil-nil. Chelsea will be the by far the happier side with that. To be fair, we weren't good enough to actually break them down and score. But we had a lot more of the ball. And you can see as, as a full 90 minutes goes, it was an atrocious game of football. Not good enough, I'm afraid. Chelsea didn't even look to really attack. It was just try and stop us scoring. So what can you do? So as you can probably tell, a little bit frustrated after that Chelsea game, a 0-0 draw where I don't think either side really deserved to win the match. We had the chances, they defended brilliantly, but then again, we didn't really create anything clear-cut. So I guess a 0-0 draw is probably a fair result, but if you look at the fixture list for this November in the Premier League, Chelsea were up first, Man United now who are third, and Spurs later on who I think were sixth. So three of the top six in today's episode, a 0-0 draw to start things off wasn't exactly the plan that I was looking for. And uh, of course, last year's champions, Man United, at, uh, at home here. It was going to be a tough game, but I knew from the start we had to start strongly. We had to go and try and attack from the first whistle. And that's what we did. And inside two minutes, we had the dream start from Lucas Torreira as he put us ahead. Now, I will say... I think Davidea potentially will be frustrated and kicking himself that he hasn't saved this. But it's really smart from Lucas Torreira because he realises, OK, I've got to keep this on the floor. And he goes for a bit more placement rather than the power aspect. He keeps it low. And that's what stops maybe David Gea getting down early to stop the shot. But phenomenally done from Lucas Torreira. We had the lead in the first few minutes. And I was thinking, what a start this is comparing it to the game against Chelsea. I thought Lukaku had scored against his former club when he got in. Laid in from uh, Ivan Herrera, but he hit his shot straight down the throat of the goalkeeper. And I think it was blocked in the end on the line before Ivan Herrera doubled our advantage in the 23rd minute. Now, if you're looking at a game where we've just played against Chelsea, we were subpar. We didn't create much to jump to Goodison Park here against arguably a tougher side in Man United. Of course, they're trying to defend their league title this year effectively. And one of the sides still in the race in this early stages. 
this was a start that I really felt like we'd uh, we'd done bits to get 2 0 up. And Patrick could have made it three just after the half hour mark, but his shot went wide. And then some fantastic goalkeeping slash defending as Mason Holgate or Lunan, I think it was actually Holgate who got the touch, stopped Manchester United getting back in this just before. We had one last chance in this first half from Melo Lukaku itching for a goal against his former club. But the woodwork denied him there. And honestly, I just felt so bad because he had two big chances. And another day, Lukaku would bury both of them. So, yeah, a little bit frustrating there. But the second half got back underway and it was as if it was a tale of two halves. I mean, you look at the start we made in the first half of this one. What a way to start the game. And I felt, certainly, I felt like it was Benfica vibes coming back. You know, like, we were brilliant in the first 15 against Benfica. We threw it away, ended up 2-2. And when Fred put Man United back into the game... I was getting some Benfica vibes. Now, with 15 to go, after all the pushing that we'd done, the chances that we had, it was Benfica vibes because Manchester United got themselves back in the game after Verratti smashed it in the back of the net to make it 2-2. Another one of the situations where I feel like the goalkeeper, this time Lunan, would have been a bit frustrated that he hasn't saved it. Um, I spoke about, obviously, Torreira's effort in the first half. David De Gea would have felt the same. I do think Lunan... Will be a bit frustrated getting beaten at his near post like that. But I have to say, coming away from the game, you look at our first half performance, compare it to the second. Again, it was like we'd lost concentration a little bit, just weren't good enough. And I do feel that the 2-2 draw there against Man United was actually probably a fair result. You know, they were in the game. It wasn't like we were by far the better side or anything like that. And I have to say as well, I do feel like it's a bit more competitive than we've had in recent seasons, of course. We were running things in Holland with the Kraftschap and now went to Villarreal, winning the league quite comfortably, going fully unbeaten. We're still unbeaten here with Everton. But I do feel like it is quite close at this stage. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have to keep working hard to make sure that we don't allow teams back into it too easily. But we'll, uh, we'll keep going as it comes. And then it was time for Dynamo Kiev, the fifth game in our group stage at the moment. We are five behind Roma, so we have to win this game. And Sai Gankov scored our opening goal after 25 minutes, and I felt like home advantage. We should have no problems at all here against Dynamo Kiev. Winning this would secure our spot in the knockout rounds of the Champions League. Um, but we'd still be five behind Roma, so it wouldn't even matter what we do against them. After that, we cannot secure first seed. So all we had to do was win, and we would secure ourselves at least second seed. Well, uh, uh, you know, second seed out of the group, nothing more than that. So uh, I just knew we had a job to do, and we wanted to go about doing that job. Even if it is going to be second seed, I've said it before in other series, is it doesn't really matter in the Champions League if you finish in your first in your group or second, because largely the team you get in the knockout rounds usually are a very good side anyway. So... Yeah, I'm not going to read too much into the first seed, second seed type thing. Davis put a three in front, making sure of our victory here in the second half. A fantastic finish as well. Dynamo Kiev really didn't have much to stop us. And when you see, obviously, the first game we played in the group stage against them, it was so convincing there, and it was pretty much the similar type of thing here at Goodison Park. So, 3-0 win. Gets us in the Champions League knockout stages. We won't know our knockout round opponent because we've still got that game against Roma to come, even if it is meaningless. But I am optimistic that we will potentially reach that final, maybe even go on to win it. Of course, we did win it with the Kraftschap, so anything's possible. But they are the match facts. Deserved winners from that game. Just showing you confirmation now then that we are actually secured. And if you look at that, five wins from five from Roma, 15 points. They have smashed this. Arguably, if I hadn't have simmed the game against them, maybe it would have been a different case. Possibly we would have uh, won that. We'd have been topping the group ourselves. But they have done very well, Roma, in certain areas. And of course, that, that draw against Benfica kind of has sunk us a little bit in that one, trying to secure top seed. But positive thing is we are out of the group anyway. So there you go. Guaranteed Champions League knockout football. And the final game for you comes here at the hands of Tottenham. A side that are not necessarily struggling, but are not up there right now challenging. They are in the top six, though, and that remains uh, still a challenge for us because they're a decent side, as, uh, as you'd expect. And actually, we were behind inside seven minutes. Look at this, by the way. Fantastic little cross in towards Harry Kane, who makes no mistake with the finish, as you would come to expect from, uh, from the clinical goal scorer. And uh, at this point, you know, we'd just drawn against Chelsea... We just drawn against Man United, so to be behind to Tottenham, I'm not going to lie, I was a little bit worried. I was thinking to myself, if we lose this now, coming into this game, City had, had, had you know, kind of got back the points gap. They were then a point behind us in second place, so I felt like we had to get a result, even if it was only the draw here, and uh, make sure we don't throw it away too much. But luckily for us, we actually had a game in hand, even if with City were a point behind, so if we did win it, 
you know, he would go to that four points. So when even Herrera scored this goal, it settled any sort of nerves that I had coming out of that one. And then not long later, even Herrera again using that pace to get in behind here. So he just lays it on a plate and there is Patrick. Mr. Fantastic with the finish to make it 2-1. 20 minutes on the clock. There'd been three goals and we turned around the deficit that we had in the beginning. And I got to say, after that, it was one-way traffic. We really did take over in the game, which was nice, nice change from... Uh, from the opening two games, you know, Chelsea and Man United where we weren't phenomenal. But here we did actually take our chances and we were a bit more clinical. Terreri, you can see, gets the shot. Quite lucky the ball bouncing around. Wambasaka lifts it in and there is Romelu Lukaku to score to make it 3-1 Everton. I have to say the big man has been in the goals this season. That is his ninth Premier League goal of this season. And we've only played 13, 14 games. So that big fee that we uh, gave out for him, I've got to say, I feel like he has paid it back slightly. And he had another chance before the end of the half. This one, though... Bit more of a tough one. Good save in the end from the goalkeeper. How Wan-Bissaka doesn't turn it in, I do not know. He decides to go for a cross instead. It was a wrong uh, decision to make in the end. I felt he should have shot. But nevertheless, we were the dominant side in this final game. And it was the three points that we wanted to see. A 3-1 victory in our final game it does in fact mean, even if it was a bit ropey in the games against Chelsea and Man United, that we end off with a victory. What does that do to the league table? Well, you're going to see that right now. As you can see, though, deserved winners. One shot from Spurs. Much better performance from us. It's what you've come to expect as well. This is the league table at the current time. Four points ahead of City, who, like I said, heading into that game, although we did have all game in hand, were actually a point behind us. United in there on 30 and Chelsea in there on 28. So it's us four, really, and the team's fighting it out for the title. But... Nevertheless, I want to say a massive thank you for watching this episode. If you have enjoyed it, a like would be greatly appreciated. A bit of a change today in the post-com part, but like I mentioned, it is incredibly warm. So get yourself out, enjoy the weather. This video will be up no matter what happens. And until next time, have a fantastic day, evening, and I'll see you all soon. Adios.